people and it's called Austin Yard Landscape. <clears throat> the vision of mine is when I got in trouble, I went out there and I started my own company with a little Nick Lat. I got three companies, or not three companies, I got three three call, calls on that with no equipment whatsoever. Um, I was out there running, I didn't have anything going, and I was able to wheel and deal, and I got my first mower, I got my first weed eater, all pawn shops. <clears throat> I came out because I started this in this recession, which comes with my vision that I have for my company. Um, and I wanted to go out and give quality work because people still enjoy their nice yards and their flowers. They like that stuff. And it's, and it's good because at this point in time, people aren't wanting to build anything new, but they want to maintain what they got. So I was able to come in there at a lower price and be able to come out there and give out the same results as some of the major companies. And that's what it was. It was so the customers can enjoy their elegant yards, you know, so they can look out and just, you know, feel, feel good. And then eventually, I want this company to move up into helping the homeless. I want to restore hope to the homeless because that's what's happening to a lot of people on the foreclosures and, and everything like that. There's, there's a lot of people losing their homes. There's a lot of people not doing much. And I want to restore hope to them because I think if you gather some hope that you're going to be able to prevail through some of the times that we're going through. And so that's what I eventually want to do. That, that looks like grabbing a, um, like a building, a rental building, going out there renting um, a little building and bringing in some selective some selective homelessness people and all that kind of stuff and offering to give them jobs and let them start working while getting normal paychecks and getting them to a point where they can set up and start maintaining their own bills again. Something really easy so they can feel good. <clears throat> This is where I was growing. I like these pictures. I'm kind of backwards on this. Now this is trust, loyalty, and growth. On loyalty, trust, and growth. In my company, I believe that loyalty is more important than money. I don't need the money. I mean, I like the money, but it's not that important. You know, because in businesses, sometimes people have some hard times and they're struggling and stuff like that. So they're not always going to be able to be there at their demand. So if you can create the loyalty, you can gain an understanding within your employees where it will make it so you guys can communicate and be all, you know, be good and you can keep things going. And plus, they'll be there on times when it's even rougher. <clears throat> now, I have a lot of integrity in my company, which I'll go and I'll do everything I can to meet my customers' needs. Um, one of my biggest things that has been working a lot is I've, I've researched a lot of new products. Um, fertilization is one of them because I'll get a lot of the, the um, people that don't, really have like green yards and all that and I'll bring it back up. So I, I researched that and while they were seeing all the results, um, they gave me much more, well, much more word of mouth. Um, and that, that started my season, I've been doing this for two seasons right now and my seasons have, um, oh not seasons, but my growth has doubled in those two seasons. I started at three and today I'm currently sitting at 16 that I'm running on my own. <clears throat> And that was the research and all the new products and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> now I can sit right here. I, I, I began the growth spurt, which doubled itself in the first season. <clears throat> This is what I like in um, employees. You know, I don't ask a lot because I'm not perfect either. <laughs> you know, I just like them to show up to work on time. And then if they're left alone on projects and stuff like that and something's not going right, I just want them to give me an accurate information about it, you know, so we can work together and find out a solution for it. And I like the motivating. The motivating is probably the biggest for me. I like to see some of my employees out there that are out there encouraging other people to keep going. And I think that's important to me because if you see the, your other employees encouraging your other guys, then, you know, and, know, and you get this sense of feeling as the boss that, you know, you're giving them their motivation that they need, and they're feeling good. Another reason on this, and I'm not, since I'm on the, I'm encouraging others, I don't really like how the business world is today, and I don't really like how people are treated at work. I don't really like that at all. They go to work, they work, you know, or they work really hard, you know, and sometimes they get so in, especially for mothers and fathers who go out there and they work for almost nothing to bring money home to their families and all that stuff. 
but after a day's work, the boss is either riding them or, or whatever, and they're just drained, and it takes away their ability to be effective parents at that time, which, which hurts the kids. So I don't really like that. So my company, you know, as this backs up, lend, I lend hands, you know, and, and encouragement and motivation and all that's perfect for them, and I love it. Then the dedicated, I have my little picture of the teamwork, three people up there. Looks like a big stick. It shows his work, or it shows that his work stands for something, you know, whether it be his own, his own, you know, integrity about the job, or his own, um, you know, his own thoughts and feelings about it. And one that always feels good about what he's done, and he wants to improve it to be better. My son, who worked for me before he went back, was one of those. So that was really cool to me. He was 17 years old, and he worked for me last summer, and he made enough money where he was able to go buy his first car. So he was really stoked about that, and during the first time when I got him out there, he really couldn't do a lot of very well mowing and everything, but over the course of like a month, his lines became extremely better. He started operating more equipment. It was really good. He always was striving to get, become better, and that was awesome for me. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking for when I'm hiring employees. It's just people that carry those traits. It just makes the world of that work a lot. You know, you're just gone. Marketing approach, I used ads and a Nicholsworth as I stated out in the morning that um, it was an ad to Nicholsworth and that's where I got my first three ones. Um, our first three customers where I had to build as many effective communication and business cards. And door-to-door -door visits with a prepared short speech is extremely important because you don't want to go up to um, a door and have this big old long spiel. You know, people are like, it's already an inconvenience that you got somebody knocking at your door. So if you can go up there, so if you can go up there and you have something that you can offer at a quick, in, in, a, in a quick second that leaves them <coughs> feeling empowered to make that choice, that's what's really important because that's what mainly it is because it's their money and money's tight for everybody right now. So if they got to feel that they got control and they're going to get desired results out of what little bit of money they got, you're about 90% sure to get the job. And that's what, that's what is, that's the door to door, so the short, and the presentable options, and that's part of the short speech, you say, I'm, I do maintenance, I like to we I create new beds, um, and during the winter, you got to throw that in because it's seasonal, and you got to throw that in to keep yourself going for winter. And those are the presentable options that are in it. And then resourcefulness. If you got areas where you can talk to your customers and they either need some plumbing done, the yard done, framing done, building done, and you're able to give that to them, that helps a lot more too. And the reason that helps is because then they can go and I can get these guys to do the job, you know, under my name, which keeps it going. And then they will get, they, I can charge a percentage for the finder's fee. I can have them go out and say they build a 20,000 deck and I charge them 20 percent and I get the difference of that. <clears throat> and, that and, and that's really helpful because some people don't want to make all those thousands of calls. They don't want to make thousands of calls to get this done and that done if you can get it out there and sell it right off the get. <clears throat> Final outcome, my approach is as how I hire my employees, the way I was explaining to employees and how I hire them and all that is very, very good because it creates security in your employees and it lets them feel like they still have a life outside of work. That's really, that's really kind of neat. And then it's the uh, sense of giving this, the customers their sense of independability, like I was saying, you, know, you give them the quick options where they feel like they're in control of their money, well, they'll still feel independent about their choices. One of the biggest things that I found when I was doing this, and this is right here at the end. Um, where is that? Yeah, right up here. Myself being able to adapt to a lifestyle that may or not be, or may not be fit, has been, it's been huge. And that works because if I can go out there and I can offer my services at a price that they can pay, but on top of the money that I'm making from them, I can still keep my life my house, my food, my bills, my phone, and all that paid, but not with a whole bunch of extra, there's a huge step in creating your loyalty right there because you've adapted your lifestyle to fit theirs. A lot of it's get rich quick, and I don't really care about money. I like, and you know you need to have it. Money's the root of all evil, but you know you need to have it to pay the bills. You know, but you can adapt your lifestyle 
to another person's to where they're comfortable being able to keep their lifestyle. I have four people on my caseload this year that are on unemployment that are paying for me to do their jobs. So that was my way that I've used leadership to everything in my company. That's it, guys. Nice.